Thank you so much for taking time to worship together online. It has always been a joy and a delight to be worshipping in person, but we cannot at this time. So we do miss you. But we are grateful that our team has facilitated and put all of these things together. We thank you for their dedication and we enjoy worshipping like this as well. Amen. We are beginning a new message series entitled Born Ready. I want you to be ready for something special, something powerful in these coming weeks. We have lined up many different speakers and they're going to be ministering to you. The messages, they are going to be very practical, very biblical and inspirational. Today, the title of our message is You Are Call. Talking about call. Just a few days ago, I came across an article. The humble phone call has made a comeback. They noticed that the rise is stunning given how voice calls have been long been on the decline. The volume of phone calls has surged more than internet use as people want to hear each other's voices in this time of pandemic. Phone calls have made a comeback in this pandemic. I believe if that is true physically, I believe it is also very true spiritually. God is calling you. You are called. There is a longing in our hearts to hear God's voice. People could have just write to one another, short messages or emails, but that is not enough. We want to hear each other's voices. Yes, reading the Word of God, reading good books, godly books, it's great, but there is a longing for something more. We want to hear the voice of God. God is calling you. Today, I want to share with you that the voice of God is speaking to us, not only corporately, but personally as well. Turn with me to the Gospel of Mark and let us look at this story. Chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But Bartimaeus cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. There are two things about Bartimaeus that we learn in this passage. Bartimaeus was blind. This was not his own choice. Possibly he was born that way. He was born blind. Now, to be blind is to live in total darkness. He is totally dependent on others. Bartimaeus could not participate in the regular activities of life. Number two, Bartimaeus was also a beggar. As he was also blind, that made him even more helpless, completely, utterly helpless. He completely depended on the kindness of others. In this story, we are all Bartimaeus. We are blind in some sort, in some way, and we are all helpless in every way. You see, when I was born at the, at the age of five, my father left us. I felt like that was my blindness. I felt like that was my handicap, not only emotionally, but materially and in so many ways. I felt like I was born not ready 
to face the challenges of this world because I don't have my father in my life. But Timaeus was born blind. How can he be born ready for this world? He is really born not ready. There is a handicap in his life. Today, every one of us may not be blind or have any physical handicap in our lives, but we all sure have some emotional, spiritual, relational handicap. All of us, we are born like Bartimaeus. And that brings us to the theme of this message series, Born Ready. I want us to know, my brothers and sisters, whatever circumstance that you're born into, the family that you're born into, the time that you were born into, the place that you were born into, you are born ready. Just like Bartimaeus, he was born ready for an encounter with Jesus. Bartimaeus, because of his blindness, that blindness drew him in desperation for a miracle that only he knew God can perform, that man cannot, because man is not able to. Bartimaeus has always been ready and waiting for that day to meet with Jesus. Today, I want you to know that we are all that Bartimaeus ready to encounter Jesus. Today, this weekend, we may be born blind and helpless and lonely, but we are born ready for a miracle. Would you say amen to that? Let me share with you the first thought. Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming to town and Jesus was so near to him, even though he could not see Jesus, he cried out to Jesus. Bartimaeus is so used to calling out to men for help, but this time he's calling out God for help. Not only he was calling out, he was crying out to Jesus. There was a desperation, there was a sense of urgency. This is the moment. This is the time. It is going to be now or never. Finally, he has found that man, Jesus himself, who could permanently and fully meet all his needs. He was ready and he was born ready. He believed that Jesus could do something for him that man cannot do. But the crowd told him to be quiet. There will always be people and circumstances in your life that will tell you, don't call out to Jesus. Don't cry out to him. But Bartimaeus knew more than all the others. He knew well that this is the only chance. He cried out even more and even louder. But one thing that really amazes me as we read the story, in the midst of all the noises and the commotions and the actions in the story, and Bartimaeus crying out, Jesus could hear him. Isn't it interesting? In all of this busyness and all the people surrounding Jesus, Jesus could tune in like a parent in the middle of the night or in the, in, in the midst of the noise, when the child began to cry out for the parents, the parents could hear it. You know what? Jesus always hears us when we cry out to Him because He loves us. Scientists have now uncovered answers why parents are so sensitive to the sound of their babies crying. A study found that the so-called cuddle hormone, oxytocin, which surges following childbirth, in the mother, changes the way auditory signals are processed in the brains. They found that oxytocin turns up the volume of social information processed in the brain and increases sensitivity in the parents toward the child's crying. No wonder our Father in Heaven had the cuddle hormone, oxytocin, spiritual, turns up the volume and increases sensitivity in Him towards you whenever you cry out to him. It was in 1987, I was, a Zim, I was in Zimbabwe, Harare. I was a young missionary, a very young and poor missionary. It was so bad, I was so broke that I don't even have money to buy clothes for myself. I could barely have food even. 
and literally I have only one pair of, uh, of jeans. Yes, only one pair, and the only time I get to wash my pair of jeans was on Monday during my off day. And I remember that one day in the middle of that night, I was so desperate and filled with self-pity and felt so sorry for myself. I picked up my guitar. I was worshiping God. I was crying. I was in desperation. There were so many things in my head. I felt like, you know, you know, I was lost. I need to cry out to God. I was, I was crying out to God. And guess what? The next morning, I opened up at my front door, a bag of new clothes right in front of my doorstep. And till today, I don't really know who put that bag of clothes in front of my house. <laughs> Possibly my neighbor. They heard my cries. They heard my prayers. <laughs> but, but I believe definitely it was God. God was tuning in. He heard my cry and He was responding to my needs. Today, no matter where you are right now, no matter where you are at this moment, listening to these words, you can cry out to Jesus for help. Because He hears you. You are not alone. The cuddle hormones in our Heavenly Father attends to us and He rushes to us and He comes to us. The second thing that I notice in this story, this beautiful story, Jesus responded to Bartimaeus, but not the way we would expect. <laughs> Did you notice that in spite of the fact that Bartimaeus calls directly on Jesus, that Jesus does not answer Bartimaeus back directly? Note how Jesus asked the disciples to go and call Bartimaeus. Jesus sent the disciples to Bartimaeus with the words. <laughs> he says, come. Jesus could have spoken directly and personally to Bartimaeus, but he did not. He chose to use his disciples as his messengers, his hands and his feet, his mouthpiece. So Jesus gave the command to his disciples, you go and call him. Now Jesus had a reason for that. He chose to involve his followers, his disciples. They are his hands and feet. That's the way that God always chooses to work, to touch a lost world, to meet a need in someone. Today, Jesus still chooses to use you and I, his church, to call Bartimaeus to him. When I was a new believer, uh, I shared with us, you know, I went through much persecution. I was so discouraged to a point that I stopped attending church for some weeks. I stopped going to church for some weeks. I got very discouraged and disillusioned with God and church and so many things else. And I was in despair. And guess what? God called me back to church. God called me back to be with His people. But He called me through the church people, the church brothers began to call me. They came to visit me. They reached out to me. And that is the way that God will minister to us or speak to us sometimes. It was in 1995. I was studying in a seminary. And uh, I was, was visiting a church that afternoon. And um, at the end of the service, the speaker, the preacher, called me out to the altar area and began to prophesy over me. He knew nothing of me, in fact. Began to prophesy over me. And there was this one word that stood out in that prophecy that I couldn't understand. It was unusual. And I asked myself for some time and for some years what it meant. And that word is international church and then international ministry. God was speaking to me through the speaker, the preacher, calling me to minister to work in an international church. And only after three years when we came to Hong Kong and we came to ICA, that only it began to make sense. God spoke to me three years before. You see, many times God speaks to us 
through the brothers and sisters in our church, calling us to himself to do his will, to participate in his work. Jesus' words to Bartimaeus through the disciples were, take heart, get up, he is calling you. Today, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is speaking to you. Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Would you take heart right now? And would you get up right now? Because God is calling you. It is an invitation to come to Jesus. My final point, my fi final observation in this wonderful story is that Bartimaeus came to Jesus. Now, you must remember, Bartimaeus was blind. It must have been very difficult, even unreasonable for Jesus to have Bartimaeus to come to him. It is really not right even. <laughs> Can't Jesus tell that this is a blind person in desperation calling out? But Bartimaeus sprang up, threw his cloak away, the scripture tells us. There was an immediate response. There was an excitement and an energy. Even his blindness could not hold him back because he knew he was born ready for this moment. Somehow his ears could see. <laughs> and he responded to Jesus. He went up to Jesus. And guess what? Jesus said these words. You need to listen carefully right now. What do you want me to do for you? Let me say this again. Jesus is asking, what do you want me to do for you? If I would be asking you this question, what can I do for you? If you would be asking me, what can I do for you, Pastor Ed? I guarantee you, our answer should be and would be, no, I'm perfectly fine. It's okay. Don't trouble yourself. I'm okay. <laughs> There is a sense of reservation. There is a sense of shyness even. There is a sense of uh, unwillingness to open up, to reveal our needs. There is, a, there is a hesitancy to be transparent. But Bartimaeus was completely the opposite. There was sense, a sense of honesty and urgency. And he responded to Jesus. Today, you know, this question that men will never ask this. Nobody have ever asked me this question. What can I do for you? I believe you too have never experienced such a generosity from anyone. But here, Jesus is asking you, seriously. Jesus is asking you and I, what can I do for you? Not that Jesus is unaware of your needs. Because some of us is going to ask, why did Jesus ask Bartimaeus? Because obviously Jesus knew that Bartimaeus was blind. Unless Jesus was blind himself. And obviously he was not. Then why would he ask him what he wanted? And in the same way, some of us will be asking, why would Jesus ask me this question? Can't Jesus see my state of condition, my needs? He knew my every thought. Why can't he just meet my needs if he wants to? Surely, Jesus has a reason. I believe that here, Jesus is cared for us so much that this question reminds us of three most important things, three most important truths. The first is that there are certain things in our lives that only God can do for us, that we and the rest of others, men, are incapable of doing for ourselves. Bartimaeus was blind. There is nothing man can give to him to recover his sight. There was absolutely nothing else man can do for him. And possibly today, right now, you are in a state where there is really no hope anymore. You've come to the end of the road. It's dead end. And you might as well accept the fact 
Don't deny it. Don't lie to yourself. But today, I want to come and say to you, only God can perform that miracle. The second truth that we learn in this question, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus is asking. That God is more than willing. Obviously, He is able, but He is more than willing to meet all your needs. He is more than happy to meet all your needs. I've met men who is more than able to meet my needs, but they are very unwilling to help me. <laughs> you have met those as well. But here you have a God that is so generous because He loves you, that He is not only able, and most importantly, He is more than willing. And finally, whether or not our need is met, it all depends on one thing, only one, our willingness to ask. I'm here to tell you that God is willing. Are you willing to receive this miracle? God is not testing your faith, but He's simply asking, do you really want? Are you willing? And I pray and I hope and I believe that none of us will say, God, I'm perfectly fine. I'm all right. I can take care of this myself. I'm okay. But I pray that you will be bold enough that you will sense that God is good, that you can trust Him. It is not about troubling Him, but it's all about believing in Him. That today you will come and you will ask, that you will seek and you will knock. So your responsibility today is to ask. Jesus would gladly heal you, meet your needs, heal your marriage, provide for their needs, do the work of miracle. But you must ask. Jesus, in the Gospel of John, tells us when we ask, in chapter 14, verse 13 to verse 14, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. He says, I will do it. It is difficult to imagine what it was like, Bartimaeus in his thinking and how he was feeling, what was going on in his head and in his heart. But Bartimaeus that day, he responded to Jesus. He asked, Rabbi, recover my sight. And he received his healing. And Jesus said, go, your faith hath made you well. That day, Bartimaeus not only received his physical sight, but his spiritual sight as well. For the very first time, Bartimaeus could see Jesus not only with his physical eyes, but with his spiritual eyes. Today, Jesus is still asking us, still asking you the very same question, what do you want me to do for you? What can I do for you? He is still asking and he's waiting for you to answer this question. Would you raise your hand wherever you are? Can we just pause for a moment? Because this is a very personal question. We're all Bartimaeus in this story. What do you want me to do for you? Would you respond to Jesus, His invitation? Tell Jesus. Some of us, there is a need for forgiveness, for provision, for healing, for peace. What would you ask from Jesus? Father, today, as we raise our hands, you are listening to our cries. In this moment, you hear our cries and our longings deep in our hearts. When man cannot hear our cries, but you, the great Father, the good Father, 
you tune into our Christ, there is a sensitivity in your spirit that you could hear our cries and you respond to us at this precious time and you ask the question, what do you want me to do for you? And we respond to you. Would you each one begin to respond to Jesus? Tell him what your needs are. And Father, as you hear these prayers from every one of us, Lord, these are prayers of faith because we believe. And I know in Jesus' name, we will receive. You will respond to these needs. And we give you the glory. We give you the praise. You are a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.